Hi YouTube and welcome to Italy! have been watching my previous vlogs you'll know that I'm currently traveling around Italy by myself I have traveled to Italy many times before but on this trip I am actually traveling to so many different regions and cities that I've never actually visited and they're a little bit outside of the usual places that most tourists visit such as Milan, Rome, Florence, Venice. I didn't want to do that on this trip. I really wanted to visit other places that are not often visited by tourists. So at the moment I am in Matera which is on the border of Puglia which is where I was currently staying in the past week. So after I left Abruzzo, so originally I was in Abruzzo, if you want to check out my last vlog, I will link it here on Abruzzo and my journey to traveling to where my ancestors are from, where my nonna was born. So I have Italian heritage, I'm Australian, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, but like many people that live in Melbourne, we have Italian heritage. So I wanted to come on this trip to Abruzzo, which is where my family's from and connect to my roots. So I... My previous vlog is on that. So then after I left Abruzzo, I caught the train from Pescara to Lecce, which is in Puglia, which is a different region in the south of Italy. And I absolutely loved Puglia. I stayed in Lecce for two nights. I stayed in this beautiful, beautiful apartment, an Airbnb, and I had the entire rooftop to myself. So this was such a hidden gem. I had the entire rooftop, can you imagine, like the terrace of an apartment building and it was beautiful, had all of these plants and just so much sunlight, so much natural light in the apartment, which I love. I love apartments with, with natural lighting. When I was in Lecce, I visited the old town, which was stunning. The architecture just was breathtaking. One thing I found about Puglia is that the architecture here in Bari and in Lecce, it was amazing. Like just the detail in the buildings and not just like one significant church. It was like in all the buildings. It was just so detailed and they had like animals and dragons, which I love. I love dragons. And like angels and you know mother mary and jesus like there were so many carvings into the buildings which was amazing and it was just stunning to just walk around the streets and just absorb all of that that amazing beautiful art weaved into the architecture so i spent some time walking around the streets of lecce i also on one of my days from lecce i caught a bus which was about i don't even think it was one hour away to a beautiful beach on the cliff tops called san andrea and here i spent the whole day at the beach and i was like walking around the cliff tops and taking photos it was beautiful it was so cool and i saw heaps of locals going there so if you're ever in lecce down the south south of puglia then definitely check out san andrea because it's just stunning and and you can literally jump off the cliffs into the water and the water is like crystal blue like you can see through it absolutely stunning highly recommend traveling there after I stayed in Lecce for a couple of days I then moved to Bari which is still within the same region of Puglia. It was about an hour and a half via train from Lecce to Bari and it's a little bit further up north than Lecce. So when I got to Bari, I of course checked out the old town, similar to Lecce, the old town there. All of these cities in Europe, if you haven't been to Europe, they have old towns that still have like have been preserved as how they originally were like back, back, back in the day so they're absolutely beautiful they look different than you know how the modern day buildings are designed and the architecture that we we see as common today like a lot of these old towns they contain all these historical buildings and like 
cobbled streets and they're just beautiful like the doorways there's just so much detail in them which is just it's so fascinating i don't know I, i'm a history person well not really but i love <laughs> i love like old things that's one thing i really enjoy that's why i love europe so much because i just find there's so much history and i don't truly understand all the history there is to know but i just can appreciate i can appreciate how old these buildings are and how much time and effort and and vision would have been required to create these beautiful structures so in Bari, i i visited the old town i loved going and seeing the the nonnas uh making homemade pasta in some of the streets in the old town you can walk down and you can see them in front of their little shops or little apartments and they're just like you know making their pasta and you know they make the traditional one from that region so one thing you might not know about italy is that within each region within each town even there are specific foods that are like known and famous within that particular town or that village or that region and the same food is not actually found within all of Italy. While you might see common themes such as pasta, the way that they make the pasta is very different to how they make it in, say, the north, like in Milan, to how they make it in Puglia. You know, the type of pasta, the sauce, like they usually use local ingredients. And yeah, it's so interesting to go to different parts of Italy and see the local food, the 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 traditional food from that particular region. I know the from my family in Abruzzo, what my nonna makes, one of the traditional dishes from her specific town in Castelfrentano is with the lasagna. You know, I'm sure most of you have eaten lasagna in your life, but um, the one that comes from my nonna's town is made up instead of just having minced meat throughout the layers of the lasagna she does it with like tiny little meatballs like woven into the lasagna so that's something different and you see every single place has their own unique way of creating certain dishes which is really cool so as i was staying in Bari, if you catch a train about 30 minutes away you can go to this beautiful town called polignano amare i hope i pronounced that correctly Polign Polegnamo e mare. <laughs> I went to this beautiful town and it has this stunning terrace view of this beach which is within like these cliffs. It's very famous. You've probably seen photos of it on Instagram. So when I saw it on Instagram, I was like, I have to go here. I kind of wish I stayed there um, for a little bit. However, a day trip was fine and they also have an old town. I visited this beach. So I was going to go to the, the main beach. I can't remember what it's called, but the famous one with the cliffs. And I went down to the beach and there was just so many people. And I'm just someone like, I don't like being a sardine in situations. You know, I think that's why I like traveling to places that are not so touristic and not so common because I don't like to be like wedged in with so many people. So I had a look on my Google map and I found that there was a beach not too far away, like another 10 minute walk from that particular beach. So I walked there and oh my gosh, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't the most amazing beach. It was very, very uh, pebbly, like rocky. So, you know, I didn't have one of those shoes that you can step on rocks. So I had to kind of like stumble <laughs> with my bare feet. However, the water was beautiful and it was actually so much more peaceful. Like I ended up spending hours there just reading my book and having space to just breathe and like put my towel down and not be like wedged in like a sardine with all the tourists, you know. And one thing I'm also mindful of in Italy is pickpocketing. And I just find you have to be very careful in those touristic areas, like, like a beach like that where all the tourists are going. Because I personally, many, many years ago, my first time that I traveled to Europe, 
my first time I traveled to Italy, I was actually robbed by a gypsy, would you believe, in Florence. And it was a very traumatic uh, thing that happened to me, you know, like I remember I kind of got, there was I think three of them and one kind of tapped me here and then someone else bumped me there and next thing I know, my phone was missing, I was missing hundreds of euros and it happened like that. My bag was open and you know, since that time, I've always been very paranoid <laughs> when I come to Italy because I know they're really, really good at pickpocketing, you know, some of the gypsies. So you have to be very, very careful, particularly in those places where there's lots of tourists, you know. So if you're ever traveling to Italy, just be hyper vigilant because it happened like in the split of a second. I didn't even feel them open my bag. Like it was really quick. So yeah, I'm always a bit nervous about going to touristic destination just because, you know, that happened to me in my experience. So anyway, I went to this beautiful beach, spent the day there, walked around the old town. I, I had a focaccia for lunch and I had a gelato, which was amazing. I've been eating ice cream every day. Like I don't normally eat ice cream. But when in Italy, when in Rome, but one thing I always do, and, I, and I'll share that with you, share this with you if you're traveling ever to Italy, is that a lot of the ice cream in Italy is not actually like real gelato. So the real one is, and this is how you know, and this was something explained to me by a local when I first ever traveled to Rome back many, many years ago. And that is that if it's legit, like it's made from real ingredients, you know, like the proper gelato. It will be covered by like a, a metal a lid. Real ice cream can't survive with the lid open. So whenever you see those ice cream shops with the ice cream like on display and it'll be like a big mountain of ice cream, that's actually not real ice cream. It's like the powdered stuff. Anyway, something to be mindful of next time you're in Italy or anywhere for that matter. But I'm always, when I'm traveling in Italy in particular, I'm always looking out for those shops where they cover the, the ice cream with the lid because I know that's the proper one. So that's my advice to any of you wanting to have the real deal of gelato in Italy. Um... Yes, yeah, so I had the best day traveling in Polignamo a Mare. <laughs> and after that, I caught the train. It was about like 30 minutes, as I mentioned, back to Bari. Spent a beautiful evening walking around the streets there. I loved Puglia. Um, highly recommend if you're thinking about traveling there. I would definitely come back again. And now I'm in Matera. So this is like on the border of Puglia. It's not actually within Puglia, but it often gets mistaken as Puglia because it's, it's very, very close. I caught a bus here and it took maybe, probably not even an hour and 30, 40 minutes on the bus from Bari Airport. Caught the bus here, I arrived yesterday and it's stunning here. So Matera is the oldest city in Italy. And I'm so excited to explore this beautiful ancient town, the oldest city in Italy. But I'm going to take you with me on my next video because I've shared so much already with Puglia and I think that's enough for you guys to digest. So my next YouTube video, I'm going to be taking you through Matera. So stay tuned for that.